GMV5 installation and commissioning instructions. This video includes six parts. The first, product introduction. The second, installation project design. The third, unit installation. The fourth, unit commissioning. The fifth, installation of wired controller and door control. The sixth, user training. The first part, product introduction, product installation features. Firstly, long connection pipe design. GMV5 applies long connection design. Maximum total pipe length, which is 1,000 meters. Maximum pipe length between indoor unit and outdoor unit, which is 165 meters. Maximum height difference between indoor unit and outdoor unit, which is 90 meters. Maximum height difference between indoor units, which is 30 meters. This design is adaptable to various complicated projects and greatly reduces installation difficulties. Secondly, high static pressure design. When the unit is installed in the equipment room, relevant static pressure can be set according to the project status. The static pressure of GMV5 outdoor unit is up to 82 par. Thirdly, auto addressing and non polarized communication. Connection is flexible and installation is convenient. The fourth, intelligent debugging. Debugging can be arranged through a, the button of outdoor unit and debugging software. During debugging, the system will track the quantity of indoor unit and outdoor unit and detect errors automatically. If there is an error, the unit will indicate the corresponding error so that the problems could be quickly solved. The second part, installation project design. Firstly, model selection project design. A. Confirmation of operation environment. GMV5 can apply to office buildings, supermarkets, schools, hospitals, etc. Please select relevant type of unit according to the location. For some special sites with much dust and strong electromagnetic interference, sufficient evaluation and related measures shall be taken, such as adding filters and isolating power supply. B. Confirmation of operation requirements. Please take sufficient communication with end users at the beginning of designing. Clearly understand users' operation demands, for example, indoor ambient temperature requirement, concrete object of using the unit, central control. C. Confirmation of project installation requirements. Communicate with the project consultant to see if the reserved installation space is sufficient and if the endurance of building is sufficient. D. Selection of relevant type of unit. Select the product according to the three basic requirements mentioned above. If the existing product cannot meet the requirement, please discuss with your green sales manager to work out a solution. The second part, installation project design. Installation project design includes first, installation of outdoor unit, second, installation of indoor unit, third, installation of refrigerant pipeline, fourth, installation of condensate pipe, fifth, installation of power cable and communication cable. First, when designing the installation of outdoor unit, please take full consideration of radiating condition, noise influence to surroundings, unit maintenance space, and endurance of lightning structure. Second, when designing the installation of indoor unit, please take full consideration of optimal airflow distribution, operation noise influence after installation, and unit maintenance space. Third, 
During installation of a refrigerant pipeline, make sure to minimize the pipeline pressure to improve the operation performance of unit. Fourth, make sure the drainage height of condensate pipe is sufficient. If not, it is recommended to choose the indoor unit equipped with water pump. If not, it is recommended to choose the indoor unit equipped with water pump. Fifth, make sure the reserve power supply capacity and wire material comply with the requirement of the unit design. The power cable and communication cable shall be independent and the parallel distance between them shall comply with the requirement of unit. The third part, unit installation. First, preparation before installation. Second, checking and installation of unit. Installation security training. Personal safety is a top priority during the whole installation process. In this process, we must comply with related national and local safety regulations to ensure personal or property safety. Specialized workers must have professional certificates, for example, electricians, welders. On-site review of design drawing, installation team must carefully read and understand the design of scheme and drawings provided by engineering designers and prepare detailed and feasible installation organization design after reviewing the on-site status. Note, installation team must strictly abide by the design drawings. If any design cannot be implemented during installation and needs to be modified, contact the designer first for approval and prepare a written document. Preparation before installation. Prepare the equipment before installation, including copper pipe, insulation material, handle rod, and communication cable. All materials must comply with the design requirements. Specification of copper pipe thickness. The insulation material of copper pipe must be rubber foam insulation material with fire retardancy level of B1 or higher. When the diameter of copper pipe is equal to or greater than 15.9 mm, the thickness of insulation material should be at least 20 mm. When it is less than 15.9 mm, the thickness of insulation material should be at least 15 mm. Condensate pipe shall apply UPVC pipe, PPR pipe, PPC pipe or HDG steel pipe. Communication cable shall apply twisted pairs copper wire with sectional area of copper core no less than 0.75 square millimeters. For units installed in places with strong electromagnetic interference, shielded wire must be used as the communication cables of the indoor units and wire controller. The same goes for communication cables between indoor units and between the indoor unit and outdoor unit. When all materials are prepared, please appoint a person responsible for keeping the materials appropriately to prevent them from dust, water and fire. Preparation for installation tools. Prepare the following tools before installation. Screwdriver, pliers, shifting spanner, pipe cutter, torque spanner, pipe pliers, pressure gauge, level bar, electric drill, electronic balance, vacuum pump. Checking and installation of unit. Checking and installing unit. When the equipment are brought to the installation site, please open the carton boxes and check the indoor units, outdoor units, and accessories. To avoid rework due to equipment defect after finishing installation, install the units only after checking everything is okay. Checking indoor unit. G 
Check if the appearance is good and accessories are equipped. Check if there is any leakage and if the pipeline is charged with refrigerant. Sticking the thimble of pipe joint, if there is gas discharge, it means that the unit is okay. Otherwise, please check if there is any leakage in the indoor unit or replace the indoor unit. Checking outdoor unit. Check if the appearance is good and accessories are equipped. Check if there is any oil mark on the pipeline and traces. If there is oil mark, it means there is leakage in the outdoor unit. Please check the outdoor unit or replace it. Checking accessories. Check if the accessories are equipped with the unit according to the accessory list. Installation of indoor unit. Steps to install the indoor unit. First, select the correct installation site. Second, drilling holes and fixing hanger rod. Third, fixing and installing indoor unit. Fourth, checking and adjusting level of indoor unit. Fifth, dust prevention. First, select the correct installation site. Confirm the whole drilling location of suspending indoor unit with the reference cardboard provided in the indoor unit cotton box. Note, take full consideration of pipeline installation and maintenance space during locating. Make sure there is no obstacle within 200 mm from the air return opening of duct type indoor unit. Second, drilling holes and fixing hanger rod. Select hanger rod model according to the weight of the unit. For unit below 5 horsepower, MA hanger rod shall be used. For unit above 5 horsepower, M10 hanger rod shall be used. Third, fixing and installing indoor unit. In order to avoid accidents, several people shall cooperate for suspending the indoor unit. Please pay attention to the following points during installation. A. Indoor units shall be fixed independently and cannot share the same hanger branch with other equipment or pipeline. B. Four pieces of hanger rod must be used during suspending. The hanger rods cannot be inclined after finishing installation of unit. C. Make sure the distance between the unit and the ceiling is more than 100 mm during installing indoor unit. D. Fix the indoor unit with two nuts in each hanger rod. Put a gasket between the nut and the supporter. Fix the hanger rod and floor with flat gasket and nut. If there is a special damping requirement, please put the damping gasket. If the hanger rod is longer than 1.2 meters, please apply two supports at the diagonal to avoid vibration. Fourth, checking and adjusting level of indoor unit. After finishing installation, check the level of unit with level bar and make sure the unit is horizontal. The unit shall incline towards the drainage direction with height difference between two lifting lugs of 6 to 8 millimeters. Fifth, Dust prevention. Wrap the unit with its plastic bag to prevent dust and impurities getting into the unit. Installation of outdoor unit. Steps to install outdoor unit. First, prepare the foundation. Second, installation of damping rubber pad. Third, carry the outdoor unit. Fourth, fixing outdoor unit. First, prepare the foundation. The foundation for installing outdoor unit must be strong enough. Ensure that the drainage is smooth and that the ground drainage or floor drainage is not affected. We must use concrete foundation. Requirements on the concrete foundation are as follows. The concrete foundation must be flat and have enough strength to undertake the unit's running weight. The height of the foundation is 20 mm to 300 mm which is determined based on the size of the unit. The proportion of the cement, sand and stone for the concrete is 1 to 2 to 4. Place 10 reinforced steel bars with a space of 30 mm among each other. Clear the oil stains, crushed stones, 
dirt and water in the reserve borehole of the foundation and install a temporary cover before installing bolts. Build a drainage ditch around the foundation to discharge the condensed water. If the unit is installed on the roof, please check the intensity of the building and take waterproof measures. If a used steel foundation is adopted, the structure must be designed with sufficient rigidity and strength. Second, installation of damping rubber pad. Please apply a damping rubber pad with thickness of 20 mm or more and width of 100 mm or more between the outdoor unit and the foundation. Third, carrying outdoor unit. Choose a suitable crane according to the weight of outdoor unit. The rope shall go through the carrying holes at the base. The unit cannot be inclined during carrying. Fourth, fixing outdoor unit. Fix the outdoor unit to the foundation with four M12 bolts securely to reduce vibration and noise. Installation of refrigerant pipes. Steps to install the refrigerant pipes are as follows. First, preparing and installing the support, hanger, and brackets. During preparing and installing, choose the corresponding specification according to size of pipeline. If they are too small, the pipeline will be squeezed and installation performance will be affected. If they are too big, it will be a waste of money and the pipeline cannot be fixed properly, which may cause vibration. The style and workmanship of supports, handers and brackets must follow the local standards. The distance between supports, handers and brackets is as shown in the diagram. The pipe led through a wall or beam must be fixed by a support, hanger or bracket on both ends at a position 300 mm away from the hole. Second, cleaning and processing the pipe. When installing the refrigerant pipes, please ensure the directions and branches are correct within minimum length. Use minimum number of brace welding junctions and elbows. There are two ways to clean the pipes. The first way is cleaning straight pipes with a piece of silk cloth. Apply some chlorine to the cloth. Push the cloth in one end of the pipe and pull out from the other end repeatedly to remove the sundries in the pipe. The other way is cleaning coils by blowing nitrogen through the pipe. After cleaning, cover both ends of the pipe with stealing caps or adhesive tape immediately to avoid sundries getting into the pipe. Third, pipeline insulation. When adding the insulation sleeve, please select the sleeve specification according to the copper pipe diameter. Users cannot cut the insulation sleeve apart. Fourth, connecting and fixing the pipe. During welding the pipeline, please follow the regulations strictly. Prohibit welding pipes without charging nitrogen. Prohibit welding pipes with gas. Prohibit fixing the pipe too tightly or too loosely. Please adjust the flexuous pipe strictly. Before connecting the flare opening of the pipe to the indoor unit, please clean the pipe first and then arrange welding or connection. Installation of branch pipe. Requirements of branch pipe installation are as follows. A. Ensure that the branch pipe model is correct. B. During installing branch pipe, make sure the length of straight pipe at the front and at the back of the three connection pipes is no less than 500 mm. C. There are two methods of branch pipe installation. A. In horizontal installation, the three ports must be on the same level. The shaping size and assembly angle cannot be changed. B. In vertical installation, the direction can be upwards or downwards. Three ports must be on the same elevation without inclination. D. Ensure that the branch pipe is close to the indoor unit to reduce impact on refrigerant assignment by indoor unit branches. Fifth, cleaning the contaminants of pipe system. Firstly, connect a pressure regulation valve on the nitrogen cylinder to the gas pipe in the outdoor unit. 
regulate the nitrogen pressure to about 0.5 MPa F per cm square meters and blow nitrogen into the pipe for one minute. Repeat this operation for three times till the dirt and water are discharged. After cleaning the gas pipe, perform the same operation to clean the liquid pipe. Sixth, airtight test. Refrigerant leakage may affect functions of the units or even damage the compressor. If refrigerant leakage is detected after the system is installed, it is very difficult to locate the leaking point as the suspending ceiling has been decorated. Therefore, the airtight test must be performed before sealing ceiling for indoor decoration is finished. Please follow the operation instructions in the service manual. Note, during the airtight test, prohibit connecting the pipeline of outdoor unit. 7. Vacuum the system pipeline. After finishing the airtight test, please connect the outdoor unit pipeline to arrange vacuum. The air discharge capacity of the vacuum pump must be greater than 4 liters per second. The precision of the vacuum pump must be greater than 0.02 millimeters of mercury. After connecting the vacuum pump, let the vacuum pump operate continuously for 4 hours and then check whether the vacuum degree reaches minus 0.1 MPa. If not, leakage may exist and please perform leakage check again. If no leakage exists, continue to vacuum for 2 hours. If the vacuum degree cannot meet the standard after vacuum twice, there may be water in the pipe when it is confirmed that no leakage exists. In this case, discharge water by blowing nitrogen. Perfuse nitrogen at 0.05 MPa to the pipe and then vacuum for 2 hours and keep the vacuum for 1 hour. If the vacuum degree of minus 0.1 MPa cannot be reached, repeat this operation till water is discharged. After vacuum, turn off the regulation valve and keep for 2 hours. If the pressure of the regulation valve does not increase, vacuum is passed. Installation of condensate pipe. First, connection between main drainage pipe and drainage pipe of indoor unit. A ventilation hole must be provided on the top of the drainage pipe to discharge condensate water smoothly. Perform a test with some water and another test with full water in the pipe after connecting the pipe. Check whether drainage is smooth and whether water leakage exists in the pipe system. The insulation layer thickness of condensate pipe should be more than 10 mm. Bond the insulation material joints with specialized glue. Then wrap them with plastic adhesive tape. The width of the adhesive tape is more than 5 cm to prevent dewing. Notes. First, determine the direction and elevation of a condensate pipe before installing it. Avoid overlapping it with other pipes to ensure straight inclination. The clamp of the pipe handle is fixed outside the insulation layer. The height of the clamp can be adjusted. Second, distance between handles as below. Third, the inclination degree of the condensate pipe must be above 1% and that of the main pipe cannot be lower than 0.3%. Adverse slopes are not allowed. Fourth, when connecting three-way pipes, the two-way straight pipes must be laid on the same slope. Installation of communication cable. The communication connection ports between indoor unit are D1 and D2. The communication connection ports between indoor unit and wire controller are H1 and H2. In communication installation, please differentiate the communication cable and power cable clearly. If they are connected wrongly, the main board of the indoor unit may be damaged. Go through pipe and connect wire independently. GMV5 cannot adopt start mode connection. GMV5 must adopt bus type communication way. The outdoor unit at the beginning of communication shall be set as master outdoor unit. The last indoor unit shall be connected to a communication matching resistor. 
the resistor is placed in the package of auto unit. Installation of power cable. Precautions of installing power cable. Ground cable must be connected. The yellow-green wire inside the unit is the grounding wire. It cannot be used for other purposes or be cut off. Do not fix it with tapping screws, otherwise an electric shock may be caused. A reliable ground terminal must be provided for the power. Do not connect the ground cable to any of the following. A. Water pipe. B. Gas pipe. C. Drainage pipe. D. Other unreliable places. The power cable and the communication cable must be laid separately with a distance of greater than 20 centimeters. Configure an air switch to each unit for short circuit and overload protection. In addition, configure a general air switch to switch on or switch off the total power of indoor units and outdoor units. Unit commissioning. First, notes. A. It is forbidden to directly connect a compressor with power supply and forcibly power it on during debugging and maintenance. B. Debugging must be performed on the GMV5 system before system operating. C. If the GMV5 system are not in debugging, the main board of auto unit display module address of 0F A0 and that of indoor unit display A0. D. An outdoor unit must be set as master module and only one master module can be set during debugging. E. An indoor unit must be set as master indoor unit and only one can be set during debugging. F. Please keep the factory settings if there are no special requirements. G. Debugging can be performed even when the wire controller is not connected. It can avoid damage on the wire controller. Second, preparation for debugging. A. Make sure that the following tools are prepared before debugging. B. Make sure that the debugging software is correct before debugging. C. Make sure that all required files and parameters are prepared. Third, check the system before debugging. System checking mainly includes First, check the installation environment. Second, check the appearance of units. Third, check the refrigeration system. Fourth, check the electrical system. First, check the installation environment. Please check the heat exchange environment and electromagnetic radiant components, etc. All checks should comply with local standards. Second, check the appearance of units. Please check 1. Whether pipeline installation complies with specifications. 2. Whether refrigerant pipes and condensing drainage pipes are thermal insulated. 3. Whether communication cable complies with installation regulation, etc. 3. Check the refrigeration system. Before debugging, make sure that the cut-off valves are fully opened. Check whether there is any oil leakage around the valve. Fourth, check the electrical system. A. Check for high electromagnetic interference, dust, and acid or alkaline gas in the operating environment. B. Check the surface of power cable. C. Check the power capacity required for the unit. D. Check the install air switch model, fuse model, and their using methods. E. Check the components in the electrical bus. F. Check the input power and check power consistency. Check phase sequence. After powering on the unit, measure whether the value of power supply is normal. Check communication system. Before debugging, make sure the communication cable and power cable are connected correctly. Debugging process. Precautions before starting debugging. First, before starting debugging, Make sure that the unit compressor has been preheated for more than 8 hours. Check whether preheating is normal by touching the compressor. Debugging can be started only when preheating is normal, otherwise the compressor may be damaged. 
Second, when debugging is started, the system will select an operation mode according to the ambient temperature automatically. Third, before starting debugging, make sure again the cutoff valve of outdoor unit have been completely open. Fourth, during debugging, the front panel of outdoor unit must be completely covered, otherwise debugging accuracy may be affected. Fifth, before debugging, make sure that the additional refrigerant charging to the system has finished completely or for more than 70%. Introduction of debugging methods. GMV5 provides two debugging methods. One is to perform debugging through the main board buttons of outdoor unit. This method doesn't need specialized tools and can be performed by engineer on site. There are three pairs of LED indicated information. LED1 shows the debugging code. LED2, the debugging progress code and LED3, the debugging status. The other is to perform debugging through professional software. In this method, connecting computer is required, but the debugging process is intuitive and real-time detection of operation parameters is available. Next, detailed steps of the two debugging methods will be given. Debugging through the main board buttons. Step 1. Completely cover the front panel of outdoor unit and open debugging windows of all basic modules. Step 2. In power of status, set the outdoor unit to a corresponding static pressure mode according to the static pressure design requirement for outdoor unit. For more details about the setting method, please read the installation, debugging and maintenance manual. If there are no static pressure requirements, keep the factory settings. Step 3. In power of status, set one outdoor unit as master unit by keeping its SA8 slip switch in double zero factory setting status. Set other modules as slave module by setting SA8 dip switch to 1 zero. Step 4. If centralized control is required, set the centralized control address SA2 in power of status of outdoor unit. Retain the master module address setting of one system in 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 status. The centralized control addresses SA2 of other systems master modules cannot repeat. Note, you could retain default settings for slave modules and it is not needed to set the slave module SA2 deep switches of all systems. If centralized control is not required, you could keep default settings and it is not needed to set this deep switch. Step 5. Power on all outdoor units and indoor units. If LED3 display A0 on the main board of all outdoor units, it indicates that the unit is on the non-debugging status. Step 6. Find the master unit with its address 01. On the master unit, press Confirm button for 5 seconds to begin debugging. Step 7. Wait for the unit to operate debugging step 1 and 2 automatically. If the master module is incorrect, error code CC or CF will display on the LED3. CC means the system does not set the master module. CF means the system has more than two master modules. When a master module has been set successfully, LED3 will display OC and it will enter step 2 automatically. If no master indoor unit is detected in step 2, LED3 will display error code L7. In this case, all outdoor unit buttons are temporarily not functional. Users can set a master indoor unit through debugging software wire controller or remote controller within one minute. If no master indoor unit is set within one minute, the system will set a master indoor unit automatically. Then the system enters the next step automatically. Step A. Step 3 is to confirm quantity of outdoor unit. If the display quantity is consistent with the actually connected units, the unit enters step 4 automatically if the display quantity is inconsistent with the actually connected units, 
power off the outdoor units and check whether the communication cables are connected correctly. Then perform debugging again. Note, it is very important to confirm the quantity of outdoor units. If the confirmed quantity is inconsistent with the actual quantity, the system may run improperly. Step 9. Step 4 is to confirm the quantity of indoor units. If the display quantity is consistent with the actually connected indoor units, please press Confirm button to enter step 5. If the display quantity is inconsistent, please check whether each indoor unit is powered on and then check whether communication cables are connected correctly. Note, it is very important to confirm the quantity of indoor units. If the confirmed quantity is inconsistent with the actual quantity, the system may run improperly. Step 10. Step 5 is unit internal communication and capacity matching detection. If the detection is abnormal, the unit will retain the current status. The errors could be C3, communication failure between master unit and fan driver. C2, communication failure between master unit and compressor driver. CH, rated capacity ratio between indoor unit and outdoor unit is too high. CL, Rated capacity ratio between indoor unit and outdoor unit is too low. If C2 or C3 appear, please check whether the internal wiring and the mainboard are in good condition. If CH or CL appear, please increase or decrease indoor unit quantity to ensure the ratio within 50 to 135%. If LED3 display OC, the unit will enter the step 6 automatically. Step 11. The step 6 is outdoor unit electric component detection. If the detection is abnormal, the unit will retain the current status. If the detection is OK, OC will display on LED3 and the unit enters the step 6 automatically. Step 12. The step 7 is indoor unit electric component detection. If the detection is abnormal, the unit retains the current status. The LED3 displays the four-digit project number of the 40 indoor unit. The corresponding error code will be displayed after three seconds. For example, if ambient temperature sensor error occurs in indoor unit number 16, LED3 will display 00 first and then display 16 and display error code DL. In this case, please confirm whether connection is correct and replace the sensor until error disappears. If the detection is OK, LED3 should display OC and the unit enters the step 8 automatically. Step 13. The step A is compressor preheating confirmation. If it is detected that the compressor preheating period is less than 8 hours, error code U0 will be displayed. Therefore, please preheat the compressor in advance. If it is detected that the compressor preheating period is more than 8 hours, the unit will enter step 9 automatically. Note, if preheating period reaches 8 hours while the unit shall be power off, the power off period shall not exceed 2 hours. Otherwise, preheating shall be arranged again. Step 14. The step 9 is about the pre-startup refrigerant confirmation. If no refrigerant in the system or the refrigerant amount does not meet the system startup requirement, error code U4 will be displayed. The unit cannot enter the next debugging step. In this case, check for leakage or charge refrigerant till the U4 disappears. If the refrigerant amount meets the system startup requirements, the unit will enter the step 10 automatically. Step 15. The step 10 is pre-startup outdoor unit valve status detection. If LED3 of master module displays on, it indicates that the unit is being enabled. If LED3 displays U6, it is required to check again whether the outdoor unit valves are open completely. After confirming that all valves are open completely, press Confirm button to enter the step 11. 
Step 16. In the step 11, the system verifies refrigerant charging amount. This step needs no operation, just for indicating refrigerant charging amount. Step 17. The step 12 is unit debugging startup confirmation. Confirm again all preparations are completed. Then enable the unit to debugging process. If LED3 of master module displays AP, it indicates that the unit is waiting for enable confirmation. If it is confirmed to enable the unit, press confirm button. LED3 displays AE and the unit enters the step 13 automatically. Step 18. After unit startup confirmation, the system automatically selects the cooling or heating mode according to the environment temperature. If LED3 of master unit displays AC, it indicates that the unit is in cooling mode. If LED3 of master module displays AH, it indicates that the unit is in heating mode. In unit operation, if it detects the action status of each electric component and pipeline status, etc. If everything is normal after the unit continuously operates for 14 or 16 minutes, the system confirms the debugging completion automatically, and then all unit will stop and restore the standby status. Debugging through the debugging software. Firstly, we will show you the required hardware and connection way. You need laptop, green USB data converter kit, communication cable, cross screwdriver. Green USB data converter kit includes software installation CD, data converter, and USB data line. Note, please use the specialized data converter during debugging. Connection way. Firstly, connect the communication terminal D1 and D2 of indoor unit with one end of data line. Connect the CAN communication interface of data converter with the other end of data line. Then connect the data converter with one end of USB data line and connect the laptop with the other end. Finally, press set button until the CAN communication light is on. Software installation. Put the software installation CD into the laptop. After finishing installation, run the debugging software. For more details, please read the Installation, Debugging and Maintenance Menu or GRI USB Data Converter Instruction Menu. Debugging Process Step 1 to Step 5 are the same as the method of debugging through the outdoor unit. The debugging from Step 6 is as follows. Firstly, Click Connect to switch the debugging software to the debugging control interface. Click Debug to switch to the engineering debugging interface. Click Start to enter the debugging function and the software performs debugging automatically. Related icon is displayed to indicate that debugging passed or is still being performed. For the face with OK displayed, a manual confirmation is required for entering the next debugging step. Click this icon to display online unit quantity, which provides reference for selection. Click Close to close the information. Related icon is displayed to indicate that debugging is not passed on the face and troubleshooting is required. After troubleshooting, the unit enters the next step automatically if there is no OK exists. Otherwise, click OK to enter the next step. Click the related icon to display relevant information detected on this face, which provides reference for troubleshooting. During debugging, click Stop to stop debugging, and then click Start to continue debugging till debugging ends. Back and skip are provided in Step 10 Outdoor Unit Valves track before startup. When Step 10 is abnormal, click Back to return to Step 9. Click OK in Step 9 to perform debugging again for Step 10. If a U6 fault occurs in Step 10, users can click Skip to skip the fault. For other faults, Skip is unavailable. Debugging Steps 11, 13, and 14 are reserved. Step 12 is the debugging confirmation step. Steps 13, 14, 15, 16 are parallel steps.
After completing debugging, the interface is shown as below. Green icon is displayed on project debugging completion step to indicate that project debugging is completed and the whole computer debugging steps are finished. Sort and save data. Make detailed records of abnormalities and troubleshooting methods during debugging for later maintenance and inquiry. At last, make a debugging report and hand it over to users. Engineering function setting. When debugging is completed, set the relative functions of unit according to actual engineering function demand. For more details about the setting method, please read the installation, debugging and maintenance manual. If there is no special demand, just retain factory setting. It is better to tell the customer which is the master indoor unit and stick the label. Fifth, operation of wire controller and door control system. Door control functions. The wire controller of GMV5 can be connected with door control device in order to control the unit on or off. The unit will stop when removing the key car and resume previous operation status when connecting the key car. Connection between hotel wire controller and door control system. First, only connecting the hotel wire controller. The indoor unit can only be connected with hotel wire controller and then the hotel wire controller is connected with door control system. In this case, the unit can be turned on or off by inserting or removing the key card. Second, connecting the hotel wire controller with another wire controller. If the user needs door control system while he doesn't want to control the indoor unit only by hotel wire controller, another wire controller can be used together with hotel wire controller. For example, wire controller SK45 can be adopted. Set one wire controller as the master wire controller and set the other as the slave one. Then connect the hotel wire controller to door control system so that the unit can be turned on or off by inserting or removing the key card. Instructions of door control signal interface of hotel wire controller. The connection between hotel wire controller and indoor unit is the same as the normal wire controller. Hotel wire controller connect to the ports H1 and H2. Note, first, ports N and L are door control power interfaces with 100 watts to 240 watts, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Second, Ports VCC and GND are door control power interfaces with DC 5 watts to 24 watts. Users can select only one from 100 watts to 240 watts and DC 5 watts to 24 watts. To connect the wire controller to the door control system, set the switch one of Deep S1 on the base plate of wire controller to ARM and then connect the door control signal wire to ports N and L or ports VCC and GND of the terminal block. 6. User Training When the unit operates normally, introduce the daily maintenance methods and the operation instructions of temperature display control device to the user so as to ensure proper and reliable operation of the unit.